There was like a lot of screaming, a lot of yelling. It was horrible. You try every single thing that you can. You try different doctors. You call other countries. Who puts you in situations and you follow what the Gedolim tell you to do and you get through it. Nobody should have to know from this kind of Tsar. My name is Maya Namdar. I have four beautiful kids. We're very normal, typical family. We like the hustle of dinner and homework and the arguing and screaming and loving and vacations and just regular. Really normal, normal family. December 10, 2021 was the Sternberg reunion. Sternberg is a sleepaway camp that Liel went to for the first time that previous summer. And because we live in Great Neck and it's quite a schlep to the five towns. So she decided to go to her friend's house for Shabbat. When Shabbat was out, Liel actually FaceTimed me while she was packing her bag and she was giggly and all happy and excited to go to the reunion. She was telling me a little bit about Shabbat and how it was with the girls. And, you know, I was like, have the best time. See you tomorrow. And I think it was around 1 a.m. We were sleeping and we heard the doorbell ring. My husband, the first thing he did, he ran to the window because it's one o'clock in the morning. So who would be ringing your doorbell? And he sees our best friend, he's a Hatzala guy, and he sees his truck, and we saw another Hatzala truck and a few other cars. And so my husband ran downstairs to open the door. From then, everything is like a blur. Um, it's a blur. I remember there was like a lot of screaming, a lot of yelling. My son came downstairs, he passed out, Natalie couldn't breathe, Hatzala came in. Like, it's, that's like, it was horrible. It was horrible. Like, I thought I was, I thought I was dead. Well, people in this community are devastated. They're mourning the loss of that 15-year-old girl, Liel Namdar. I have six children, and Tamar was the third. She was very much of a goody-goody. She got an award in 12th grade for not missing a day of school. She was born happy, always laughing, always helpful. It was Mother's Day. 10 years ago. And I got a call from Dr. Lightman. And he said, don't ask me any questions. He told me the hospital and the room number. I wasn't even sure who would be there. And then I went into the room and Tamar was in bed, but she was smiling just like she always did. And she said, mom, I've been diagnosed with cancer. And right at that moment, I, I, I felt like I would faint. I felt like I might throw up. Finding out that one of your children is most likely deathly ill is extremely shocking. But then you try every single thing that you can. You try different doctors. You call other countries. You, you find out every single thing that you can do. You never give up hope. There was so much davening. You always think, oh, they'll definitely find something. She was sick for two and a half years. She always smiled during those two and a half years. But the one thing that was comforting, she said, mom, don't be sad. I have every single thing that I have ever davened for. I have a wonderful husband, and I have a three and a half year old child. And that has been amazing for me. I got to be a mother. I got to be a wife. I have an amazing family. And it's been excellent for me. I'm not sad. This is what Hashem wants. And Hashem gave me everything that I ever wanted. My name uh, for my entire life until three years ago was Arya Zeb Ginsburg. I was very sick with COVID and the name Chaim was added to me. So now it's uh, Rabbi Chaim Arya Zeb Ginsburg. Our youngest uh, daughter, um, her name was Sarala, uh, was 17 years old when Coach Rucker took her back. 
during the weeks that she was very, very sick. Um, we were hopeful, uh, trying everything we can do, um, both with the best care and as well as uh, davening and getting brachos and tefillos from all the different uh, greatest people in the generation. It was only like the last few days when we realized that um, it was not going to uh, work out the way we were hoping. And the timing, it was a little bit surreal. We got up from Shiva on a Tuesday morning. And Wednesday night, my son got married. When the morning that we got up from Shiva, we had a little family meeting. And, and I said to them that, uh, okay, we did everything we could do for Sarala. We did everything right. And we honored her and we sat Shiva for her. And I said, now we got to do for Moshe. That's our job right now. And everybody stepped up to the plate, everybody. Originally, I wanted to postpone the wedding, and my Mkotanam are wonderful people, and I mentioned to them when we saw this direction that this was going, I, I actually spoke to them and I said, I need to put the wedding off a little bit. I, I, I can't have my son go into, uh, from Avelos into a, to Wisconsin. They were, whatever you need to do. But both Rav Chaim Kanievsky and Rav Dabba Feinstein both said, absolutely not. You don't have to change the wedding. You keep it the way it's supposed to be, and you get through it. And they were right, and we, we got through it. People, you know, walked around saying that we're angels because of what the, the timing of everything that we went through, but it doesn't work that way. Akash Baruch Hu puts you in situations and you follow what the Das Torah, what the Gedolim tell you to do, and you get through it. Chava is our oldest. She was the big sister, big, big heart. She would take care of everyone's needs. I remember even in high school, principal told me, you know, your daughter is very special. It bothers her to see a mess that other people in the lunchroom will make. She goes up and cleans up after all the tables that, where the other kids would eat. She says, it's not fair. It's it, Hashem. It just didn't seem right that they should leave a mess. That was Chava. She worked in a clothing store. Somebody came over to me and said, you know, I have a story to tell you. Your daughter was so sensitive my daughter felt bad about her physique, that she was heavy. And she never wanted to go shopping because she was afraid she would look fat. And Chava says, here, I have something for you. Let's try this. Came back and she says, oh, you know what? We can find something for you that's even smaller than this. You'll look even better in it. Chava sense that this girl felt uh, had a lowest self-esteem about herself and she deliberately gave her something way too big to be able to say oh you could fit into something smaller than this just to let her think that oh i actually am smaller than what maybe i thought i was shabbos afternoon it was pouring rain and i see dear friend of ours, Hatzola member, standing outside in the pouring rain. He's a Kohen. They had told us that Chav is gone. He greeted us, tried to comfort us. And my wife said, well, why aren't people out looking for her? No, she's not here anymore. They were trying to be gentle to break the news. So we went in the house and, you know, of course, nobody should have to know from this kind of tsar. It's unimaginable. But it's all part of Hashem's plan. And we all go through life with bumps in the road we don't understand Hashem who are we who am I certainly but we just have to have a Muna that he sees the whole picture we were blessed with Baruch Hashem six wonderful children and they're all gifts every child that one is blessed with is a big bracha She was a wonderful, wonderful mother. Gave her her whole heart and soul for her son. Her petira, her death was sudden. And we were Zoha to raise her son. 
He's today 18, and I'd like to think that she's looking down from Shemaim, content in the way that we are raising her precious son. You can see there's so much of her in him. Such a big heart, kind-hearted, get in the Shema. He's always very perceptive uh, of people and, and, and considerate of their feelings. And even though Chava is not here inspiring him, but we see for sure her hashpa, her influence on him. Even to the point where he graduated last month and the Rosh Hashiva at the graduation said, One of the greatest things that I have to say, besides marrying my wife, I think the greatest thing that happened in my life is that I went to be a shiva for the Sreffix. It was the best decision in his life to bring Ami into the yeshiva, only second to marrying his wife. For him to make this kind of acknowledgement said a lot about Chava, who she was, and everything that she put her heart and soul into raising her son. We're just trying to continue in that legacy. Losing one child is horrific. Losing two children is unfathomable. I think last year Tisha B'Av was the first Tisha B'Av that I felt the, the pain and the longing of like wanting our Shechina like next to us so badly and like dreaming of what it would be when the Beit HaMikdash gets rebuilt. Like I never, ever in all my years felt that. What I did feel was hunger and you know, waiting to break the fast, <laughs> but never have I felt such connection and, you know, those who lost close family members, parents, kids, friends, you know, someone that's very loved and close, I feel like these are the people that can really connect to, to the day on Tisha B'Av. It's a, it's a real, it's a real loss. It's a real thing. It was actually Nehru Tisharal. I was saying Kaddish for my daughter. So I went into a shul maybe 10, 15 minutes before Meyer. So I sat down to wait, and I was sitting there, and there was, looked at the, the table, there was a few svarim, I pick up the racial chachma, and I opened it up to that week's parasha, which was parasha Tetzava, and something caught my eye. He quotes a Zohar that says that every kli in the Mishkan is keneged and ever shaladam, corresponds to one of the limbs of a person. The Aron, which is the most significant uh, thing in the entire Mishkan and the Kodesh Kadashim is connected the Lev Shaladam. Just like the heart, everything revolves around the heart of a person. It's in the center. The Aron gives kochos to everything else. Everything else in the Mishkan surrounded the Aron. And then the thought hit me. What was in the Aron? What was placed in it was the Luchos that came down, that Moshe brought down, the second Luchos that remained whole, and also Shivri Luchos, the pieces of Luchos that Moshe broke, the first Luchos, that when he came down, he saw Klai, saw with the Chet Egel, he broke it into pieces. So the pieces were in there with the Aaron itself. And everyone asked this question, why the Shivri Luchos? The Shivri Luchos broke, the letters went up to Shemayim. So there are many answers given to this, but the answer came to me and said, you know what the idea is? If the Zohar says that the Aaron is connected to Leif Shaladam, Maybe that's the message that Hashem is sending to Yisrael. That just like the Aron had room for Luchos and the pieces of the broken Luchos, and his room for both, so to the heart of a person, the lave of an Adam, has room for Shivri Luchos and for Luchos. It has room for the broken part of it, as well as plenty of room for everything else that's there. And all the things that life has to offer, and all the wonderful things, and the Simchas, and the Brachos, and the nachas and all the things that the life brings with it. And they are side by side together. And it's not a steer, it's not a contradiction. So, you know, it's the same thing. The shama, the, the, they carry in your heart uh, the, the person you lost, the child that you lost, or the spouse that you lost, or, or something. It doesn't, it, it, it's there. But there's room for, for everything else. And, and that is something that really gives you a lot of keys. Tomorrow's yard site is coming up Sunday night. And I remember being in shul 
on Shabbos. And somebody said to me during the Shiva week, we're all in a Velas together. Meaning we have our own personal Avelis, but it's all part of Klai Yisrael's Avelis, uh, especially leading up to Tisha B'Av. And we hope and pray, and now I pray even more so that Hashem will end this Gola soon, and that soon we can have the ability and privilege to go up to Yerushalayim and offer Karbonus Davin by the third base of Mikdash, soon in our day. So it is an incredible medrash, medrash in Eichel. Every Yiddish at Soros, both national, both individual, is all stems from Chod Meis HaMikdash. If there was no Chod Meis HaMikdash, there would be no national at Soros, there would be no individual at Soros. There wouldn't be terrorist attacks or people dying on the hands of the enemies of Klai Yisrael. So we say we are davening for the rebuilding of the base of Mikdash. It's not just to have building to bring kabbanis to, to daven to, to end wars for Klai Yisrael, to end all the tsaras in Klai Yisrael. You know, those who are lucky that they have not lost a loved one, you know, that it's... They can just connect to the day and really feel the pain of a loss of the Beit HaMikdash. And not just feel the pain of a loss, to feel also loss and hope. We're going to have a Shekhinah here. Like, the world is going to be beautiful and act upon it. What do I need to do to make it happen faster? Like, what do we need to do? What are we lacking? What is the world lacking? Now is a very particular time. So many people have lost Parnassah. So many people are suffering financially. Incredible, incredible pain. And it's out there in the streets. And people put channel all their pain into Chud Meisah Mikdash. There's no way Akash Baruch Hu could not say, I'm going to rebuild. Now's the end. I'm bringing the base of Mikdash back this year. <laughs>